Welcome to Hydrogeology 101 Key Concepts. Today I'd like to talk about storativity, also known as the storage coefficient. In a previous video we talked about the water budget of a pumping well, and we said that if the discharge is balanced exactly by the recharge, then we might reach steady state. In most situations, however, the amount of water leaving the system is not the same as the amount of water coming in, and the equation has to be balanced by a change in storage. Think of it this way. Every month you go and spend some money, and every month you have a paycheck. If you spend more money than you receive through your paycheck, then you're going to have to take money from savings. If you're lucky and you spend less money than your income, of course your savings pot will grow. So in a way, our storage is similar to our savings. Aqua storage is measured by the term storativity or storage coefficient. And from now on I'm just going to talk about storativity so that you don't get confused. Storativity is the volume of water which an aqua releases per unit area per unit drop in water level. That means that the storativity of an aquifer is really important to know if we're going to do any kind of water budgets or aquifer resource assessment and so on. Here's a diagram of an, alluv of an alluvial aquifer. You can see there's a nice stream here, a water table, and the top part of it is an unconfined aquifer. That means that if we were to drill a water well at this location, then the water level in our well will be the same as the water table. This is what a piece of this unconfined aquifer might look like with an original water table here and a uh, well shown here with the water level at the water table. Now, if we start pumping water from this aquifer, which means we're extracting water, the water table will drop by a certain amount. This means that in unconfined aquifers, groundwater is released from storage by dewatering of the aquifer. The storativity of unconfined aquifers is the same as the specific yield. In a previous video, we saw how a certain amount of water can be abstracted from a saturated sandy gravel by drainage, and it's called the specific yield. Some of it also stays behind, which we call specific retention. And we did an experiment which showed that uh, the sample of sandy gravel which had collected from the river had a porosity of 28%, a specific yield of 23%, and a specific retention of 5%. I'd just like you to remember this rather large number here. So from each cubic meter of sandy gravel, we could drain 230 liters of water. So that's the storativity of this sandy gravel aquifer under unconfined conditions. Okay, so let's say that we have a low permeability unit here, maybe some clays, and this is acting as a confined unit to the confined aquifer below. Confined aquifer means that if we were to drill a water well down into this aquifer and seal it off properly so that it's only screened in the confined aquifer below, then our water level will rise inside the well up to a level which is equivalent to the piezometric surface of the confined aquifer. So that's just a pressure surface. And you can only see it from observation wells, which are drilled into the aquifer. Okay, so here's a picture of our confined aquifer. It is sandwiched above and below by aquifers, And you see here is our well with the original piezometric surface shown here. Now, if we were to start pumping water out of this confined aquifer, what will happen is that the piezometric surface will drop by a certain amount. Notice that the aquifer remains fully saturated. It will not be dewatered, otherwise it's not confined aquifer anymore. This means that the groundwater is released from storage by depressurization of the aquifer. The storativity is much lower than in unconfined aquifers. I've tried to show that here by a smaller amount of water in the pot. 
So just to uh, recap, in unconfined aquifers, our storativity is, is the same as the specific yield, is due to dewatering of the aquifer, and in confined aquifers, our storativity is only due to depressurization of the aquifer. Okay, so let's have a closer look at our confined aquifer. Let's assume that we have a one by one meter section of aquifer with a thickness B, and we take out a cubic meter of this aquifer, and we depressurize it by one meter. Then the amount of water which will be released from this one cubic meter of aquifer is called a specific storage. The specific storage is the volume released from storage per unit volume of aquifer per unit drop in head. So that means that we have volume in cubic meters, the uh, volume of the aquifer also in cubic meters, and the drop in head in meters. So cubic meters divided by cubic meters divided by meters, and we end up with this funny uh, unit here, which is meter to the minus one, one over meter. Okay, now let's have a look at our aquifer as a whole. If we drop the uh, pressure here by one meter, then the total amount of water which we can abstract from the aquifer is called a storativity. A storativity is a specific storage times by the aquifer thickness. And in words, it is the volume of water released from storage per unit surface area, so that's one square meter here, per unit drop in piezometric head, which is one meter drop. So we have here dimensions of cubic meters divided by meter squared divided by meter, so basically it becomes dimensionless. Here are some uh, normal storativity ranges in confined aquifers, and you'll see it goes from about 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 3. What this means in real terms is that from each square meter of aquifer and the one meter drop in pressure, you can only get about 0 0.05 liters to a maximum of 5 liters. So that's not a lot of water if you consider how much we could drain from our unconfined aquifer. If you don't know what the st uh, storativity is of a confined aquifer, just assume it's 10 to the minus 4. Another rule of thumb is that you take 3 times 10 to the minus 6 and times it by the aquifer thickness. But basically this is something you're going to have to work out in whatever part of the world you're in. Okay, if the aquifer is not dewatered, where does the water come from? That's a good question. There are two mechanisms for the release of water from aquifer storage. The first is the compression of the aquifer, and the second is the expansion of water. Let's look at the first mechanism first. Imagine that we have here a plane at the top of our aquifer, represented by this line here, then the weight of all the material above this plane, I mean it's all the sand and gravel and clays and water and whatever is above our aquifer will be pushing down and that is called the total stress. Of course it will be met by the effective stress which is the amount of stress that is borne by the aquifer materials themselves plus the amount of stress that is borne by the pore fluid themselves. So that means the water in our aquifer is also supporting some of this overburdened weight that's pushing down on the aquifer from above. Our total stress is always equal to our effective stress plus the pore fluid stress. So forces acting down are balanced by forces acting up. Let's have a look at our aquifer here. I've got some downward arrows indicating the total stress and the effective stress which is being borne by the aquifer material itself and the pore fluid stress which is acting upwards um, from within the water in our aquifer. Let's say we start to pump water out of this aquifer. What happens? Well, we're going to reduce 
the pressure here of the pore fluid, which means that the pore fluid stress will decrease. Because this equation has to balance, there's only one thing that can happen, that is the effective stress has to go up. Basically, the aqua material will have to bear more of this overburdened load. And as there's more stress on our aquifer material, we might get a bit of compression of the aquifer. This reduces the pore spaces here and releases more water from storage. You'll notice that here the pore fluid pressure has decreased and it's been balanced by an increase in the effective stress. Okay, if we continue this process, you can see that the pore fluid stress is decreasing and the effective stress is increasing and our aquifer is, um, yeah, sorry, the, the voids in the aquifer are reducing in size thereby releasing more water to our pumping well. Another thing that could happen is that um, the reduction in the um, pressure of the water here, uh, pore fluid stress, will mean that some of these particles might swell a little bit. It's particularly for clay minerals, maybe not so much for um, sand particles. Think of a confined aquifer like a car tire. You can let some of the air out, but that doesn't mean that the tire will be completely flat. It also means that we can, of course, pump air back into our tire and pressurize it again, the same as we can um, put water back into our confined aquifer and increase the uh, pore fluid pressure in here. Now we measure the compressibility of our aquifer in terms of this parameter alpha here, which is the change in volume um, over the change in stress. So that's, uh, that here is the effective stress. And it is measured in units of meters squared per newton, and you can see that Clays are much more compressible than sand or gravel or fractured rock. We know that water expands when it gets hot. Here's a nice picture from Dominica, the boiling lake. But can water also increase like a balloon if you reduce the pressure around the outside? Here's a volume of water. We reduce the pressure and it will expand a little bit. Well, not as much as a balloon, of course. In fact, the water compressibility, which is this term called beta, is tiny. It is 10 to the minus 10 meters squared per newton, so it's more or less like one of those solid rocks. It, it does not expand very much. So here's our equation for specific storage, and you'll recognize the alpha term which is the aqua compressibility, and the beta term, which is the compressibility of water. We have um, the density of water here, the gravitational acceleration, and n is the uh, total porosity. This, of course, depends on your porosity, how much water you have, uh, so these have to be together. Our storativity is the specific storage times by the aqua thickness, so here's our total formula. Let's illustrate it with a practical example. This is taken from Kruzman and Derrida, the Eau de Courandeg pumping test, and they have an aquifer thickness of 7 meters. Now, this aquifer is made up of coarse sand with a bit of gravel. If we look in Friesen Jerry, we can see that the alpha uh, values for sand and gravel is somewhere between 10 to the minus 7 to 10 to the minus 10, the average 10 to the minus 8, maybe 10 to the minus 9. Anyway, we're going to pick one of these. Let's pick 10 to the minus 8, which is kind of the middle range for sand. And we plug it into our equation. Um, this is the weight of water, 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, acceleration due to gravity, alpha, 10 to the minus 8. The porosity, we've assumed it's 30% or 0.3. And here's our beta term, which is uh, constant. Now, the specific storage works out at 9.9 .9 to 10 to the minus 5, and if we times it by the aqua thickness B, which is 7, we end up with 7 to 10 to the minus 4. Okay? Now, when you see 10 to the minus 4, it usually means that we have a confined aquifer. 
and in, in fact this is the numbers that we have uh, from the pumping test in Kruzman and the Ritter. I've made a spreadsheet where you can do all these calculations automatically. You just enter your, your numbers in here and it will calculate the different um, specific storage and so on down here. What's quite interesting is in this example that per square meter of aquifer and uh, one meter decline in head we only get 0.7 liters of water and most of that water is due to the decompressibility or sorry due to the compressibility of the aquifer rather than the compressibility of water okay in summary in our unconfined aquifer our storativity is the same as our specific yield which means it is the amount of water that can drain under gravity from the saturated aquifer. In confined aquifers, we have to consider this specific storage, which is the amount of water that we can um, take from a cubic meter of saturated aquifer without dewatering it, just by depressurizing it by a meter. And we can have a similar uh, value for the whole aquifer thickness, which is called storativity, which is basically the specific storage times by the aquifer thickness. If we look at the, the, both these aquifer situations, remember that the unconfined aquifer has a much higher storativity, or should we say specific yield, than the confined aquifer. In fact, this is one way how we can tell them apart because if we do a pumping test with observation wells we can work out storativity and then we can see what kind of aquifer it is. Okay, I hope that was interesting and informative. Thank you very much for your attention.